Hey everybody! I shot a video yesterday about biological filtration and on that video I got a question that was a very good question. It got me thinking a lot and I think it's worth talking about but in order to do that I need to do a little bit of backstory so we know what the question was about. Uh, it took me a little while to even figure out what they were asking me. So in the video I talked about your nitrifying bacteria and how that needs to be thought about as one of the animals that lives in your tank. You have to make sure it's got the proper environment, you have to make sure there's enough food to keep it healthy and alive, and because it was reliant on the amount of food that was being produced in the tank, you couldn't really develop an excess amount of this bacteria. It could only develop up to the amount where its food source was available and then it wasn't going to continue growing beyond that. And so in that video I talked about on a couple of occasions where this tank behind me, uh, the filter got shut down during a water change. I forgot to start the filter back up and because I had enough nitrifying bacteria living within the substrate and in the tank itself and the water flow and everything, the tank was able to withstand uh, having the filter shut off without having any issue. And the question was, how did the filter have enough, I think what they were asking me was, how is there enough nitrifying bacteria living both in the tank and in the filter if there was enough ammonia being produced in the tank that the tank was able to take care of itself? How was there extra bacteria in the filter? I think that's what they were asking me, and that makes sense to a certain degree. So let's break that down, and there's two things going on there primarily in my understanding of it. Uh, first of all, you do need to produce enough food to keep the nitrifying bacteria alive, and in this case the food is ammonia or waste products. But keeping it alive and having it thrive are not necessarily the same thing. So if we want to think about this in very simplistic terms, first of all let's think about it as having the filter and the tank having separate colonies of nitrifying bacteria and we'll split it up 50-50 just for the sake of ease. So half the nitrifying bacteria is living in the filter and half the nitrifying bacteria is living in the tank. So there's enough ammonia or enough food going around that it keeps all of that nitrifying bacteria alive. But if something happens where the filter now gets separated from that system, you've only got half the amount of nitrifying bacteria, but there's not so much ammonia being produced that that half can't take up the extra load. If we think about this in even simpler terms, let's think about animals and animal feed. If you've got a hundred animals and you've got enough feed to keep those hundred animals alive, and then for some reason somebody buys 50 of them and you've reduced your animals by half, but you've still got the same amount of food those 50 animals are just going to eat more food. It doesn't mean you're going to have excess food left over. It means that, that remaining smaller amount of animals is going to have more food to eat. They'll eat all that food. It's still going to get eaten up. And now the animals are going to be nice and fat and happy and healthy. And they're going to start breeding. And you're going to start getting more animals. And you're going to eventually get to that balance again where you've got the right amount of animals to the exact amount of food. And it's this stasis. So that's the main thing that's going on when you can have enough bacteria living in your tank and your filter all at the same time. It's that ammonia is being spread out through the whole system and everybody's getting some and everybody's staying alive and everybody's staying healthy. But if for some reason I were to pull some of the rocks and substrate out of there, I'm removing some of that nitrifying bacteria. But the remaining bacteria that's in the tank is able to take up the load and we still don't result in an excess amount of ammonia being produced. So that's the key thing that's going on. The other aspect of what's going on is what specifically I was talking about in the other video I shot about mechanical filtration and in this case a canister filter is basically just a storage unit for filth and dirt and crud and mum and fish poop and everything else that's constantly breaking down and producing ammonia. So when I shut the filter off and I literally disconnected it from the tank, there's a valve that completely separated it, I did separate that nitrifying bacteria from the water in the, in the tank, but I also separated a huge source of ammonia. The ammonia being produced in the tank by the fish 
is probably far less than the amount of ammonia that's being produced by all the crud that's in the canister filter. So by shutting the canister filter off, I did separate that biological filtration aspect of it, but I also separated that source of ammonia. So what was in the tank was a reduced amount of bacteria, but it also had a greatly reduced source of ammonia. So even if we went with the original scenario, and let's say I just took all of the biological filtration out of my canister filter and left all the crud in there, so I had the exact same amount of ammonia being produced, but I had far less biological filtration, then we might have seen a little bit of an increase in ammonia where the tank was struggling to keep up with a full amount of ammonia and half the amount of biological material. In this case, when I separated it though, I, it, we reduced the amount of ammonia as well as reducing the amount of biological filtration and that's why the tank was able to just keep ticking over. But the key to that was the circulation. Remember, the, 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 the nitrifying bacteria lives on surface areas. It's not in the water column, contrary to what some people believe. It does not move around in the water. It's only on the surface area and so you have to take the food to it. If you've got a very calm tank and your filter is your only source of water flow and you shut your filter off and your tank goes stagnant, that's a very different scenario. My tank has a 1,500 gallon per hour power head in it and when you shut the filter off, I've still got a whirlpool swirling around in this tank. A lot of water movement, so I'm getting gas exchange and I'm getting the water moving across the substrate and across all those rocks and everything and I'm taking the, the food to the nitrifying bacteria. So without that circulation then it would probably I'd be telling you a very different story right now. It's the circulation that's the key to taking the food to the bacteria. And again if you cut some of that bacteria out of the system, uh, I, for example I had somebody today ask me about, they were really worried about cleaning their filter and they wanted to have like excess bacteria on hand so that when they cleaned their filter they could put extra bacteria back in. You, you don't have to worry about that. If you've got a healthy mature tank that's been up and running for six months and you clean your filter, don't sterilize it. Simply clean it and you'll be fine. When you put the filter back in there, it, it's, it, you know, the, 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 the bacteria you removed isn't going to prevent your tank from being able to handle uh, what's going on. Take your little black hang on the back bio sponge, just give it a rinse in some tank water or some non-chlorinated water. And frankly, I've heard a million people say that they do it in their tap water and it's fine. Um, it's not really exposed to the chlorine long enough to do much. Better safe than sorry. Don't use chlorinated water. Rinse that little sponge out. You, you know, I mean, if you look at all the crud and filth that comes out of there, how much bacteria are you losing when you do that? And then you put it right back in your tank, and your tank never misses a beat. It just ticks over fine. So when it comes to keeping your biological fil filter clean, you don't want to sterilize that, but you do need water to flow through that. So when you do a water change, leave that sponge alone. Only take the filter pad out. Leave the sponge in there, provided the water is flowing through the sponge freely. If the sponge is starting to get all gummed up and the water is not really going through it anymore, you need to clean it. Don't sterilize it. Just give it a good scrub, wring it out, and get it so water flows through it again. You put it back in the tank, and you've probably reduced your nitrifying bacteria by 80% and yet your tank will be fine. The, the, the remaining existing nitrifying bacteria that's still on that sponge will be able to handle the load that's in there and then it will immediately begin growing back and filling back in and you'll be getting more and more of it and you won't have any problems at all. It's not that, um, you know, again, just don't sterilize your biological filter and you'll be fine. So in this case, that's, that's how I was able to separate the tank from the filter and the tank was still able to keep itself running. I hope that answers the question that I was asked. Again, I'm not quite sure that that's what I was being asked, but if I was being asked that, that was an excellent question and there's your answer. So thanks for watching. Make sure you're subscribed. You don't want to miss whatever I got coming up. You never know what it's going to be with me. So thanks again. Don't forget this one here is my 125 gallon tank. I'll see you real soon in the next one.